I'm Sylvia from Vintage Kitchen Vixen, where I share tips for simple living, creating memorable gatherings, and preparing wholesome and traditional recipes with a vintage twist. And today I'm going to be showing you what I'll be planting in my victory garden this year. In true victory garden style, I'm going to be converting some of my idle land into productive land this year. So right now I have a small little garden patch, I have flower beds out front, and I have a little herb garden. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about right now. I've been expanding the garden. It's kind of hard to see what the original outline is now. I should have taken footage before we got started. But where you see that sod, well, be. I don't know, maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. And then we're gonna be taking it all the way back over here. And that's how it's looking. So here are my flower beds. They're a mess right now because I haven't done any work on them so far and things got kind of out of hand last year just because I was working and it was really tricky. Here's my other bed. I think this one's just gonna be flowers. Um, it's really shallow, this bed, but this one should be a little bit better. And here I have a little raspberry shrub that I planted last year and I wanna do currants along here. And then here's my front yard. Thinking of doing the raised beds here, I don't know if that's going to happen anymore just because of time and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the materials in time because hardware stores are closing in Canada. Here's my little raised bed that put up last year. Actually this is a bookshelf that we found abandoned on the side of the road. So we just picked that up and we converted it into a raised bed. So it was a super simple project and probably did it all wrong but I don't care. It's going to work for us. And last but not least, here is my herb bed. I haven't done any work on it yet. Um, the snow just melted recently. We still have a couple patches, but for the most part it's gone. But you can see I have parsley from last year that's regenerating. And I have oregano. I have thyme that's going to be coming back. And I have chives somewhere, but I think it's going to take a while before they peek through. And then up here, this is kind of my neighbor's land that's behind, but it's also kind of mine because he doesn't mind it. But um, there are lilies and peonies also grow here. And I definitely <laughs> took some inside last year. And I don't think he noticed because it's like his little garbage heap area. Anyhow, that's my little herb garden. Oh, and then I also put this up yesterday. So this is new. It's my own little compost bin. So I'm not going to be able to profit from it this year. But I'm going to have a place to put everything instead of just giving everything to the city, so that's great. And I have one little area that I didn't show you yet um, and that I didn't even talk about. I have one other little area and <laughs> this was a mess last year. Like this is just weed city. I did grow rhubarb here last year and I thought it was dead, but I'm pretty sure that is my rhubarb peeking out. But the plan for this, I'm just gonna be cleaning it all out, being very careful about my rhubarb and I'm going to be sowing a bunch of flowers um, that do well in shade because I need ways to attract pollinators. And then I have a bunch of containers. I'm going to be growing quite a bit in containers. I think I'm going to grow some tomatoes in containers. I have a couple strawberry plants I'll be doing in containers and I don't know what else. Still figuring it out, but that's my garden. One of the garden beds, I'm going to be planting lettuce in there. The herb garden, I'm not going to do too much there. And then I put a little raised bed in the backyard already, so this year it's going to be productive. I set it up a little bit too late in the year last year. And in addition to that, I'm also going to be having a container garden going on because I don't have as much land as I would like to grow what I want to grow, so I'll be taking advantage of container gardening as well. So with all of that, I'm going to be planting real seeds of victory, which for me is greater self-sufficiency and a full larder this winter. If we rewind back to World War I and World War II, some of the most popular vegetables that were grown included beans, carrots, peas, kohlrabi, cabbage, kale, beets, lettuce, turnips, squash, and Swiss chard. And the kohlrabi and the Swiss chard were especially popular. And the reason for the Swiss chard and the kohlrabi is that they're apparently easy to grow. I grew Swiss chard last year, kind of just popped up in my garden. I was not expecting it. 
and I kind of struggled like my whole garden suffered last year because I did not properly fertilize my soil. If you want to learn the lessons that I learned last year, I do have a video that walks through all the mistakes that I made. I will be sure to link that below. So I'm gonna show you what I'm planting in my garden. I haven't started any seedlings yet. I am in zone, I believe I'm in zone five or six. I don't remember off the top of my head. The snow on the ground just melted where I am, but usually we don't start planting anything until May 2, 4 weekends. So there's still a bit of a waiting period before I harvest anything at all or before I put anything in the ground. So right now I'm mostly focusing on getting my seeds started, the ones that do better starting indoors, like, like tomatoes, herbs, and eggplant. Okay, so I'm going to start with some of the seeds that I grew last year. So I have parsley in my garden. I actually won't have to plant that. I have parsley in my garden already uh, from last year. Parsley is a biennial, so it grows two years straight and then after that you have to replant it. So I, I'm actually going to buy a parsley plant because it's easier. And then next year I will have that parsley that I grew this year that will keep growing. But the parsley that was there last year, that's gone. The new ones are already green and getting ready to give me a good harvest. Eggplant, I didn't, so this is Black Beauty eggplant. I didn't plant eggplant last year, but I'm going to this year. I love eggplant. I love grilling it up and making uh, like a vegetarian gyro. So they're so yummy in wraps and I might share that recipe with you. Pickling cucumbers. I love fermenting things, so I'm really excited to plant these and get these tiny little cucumbers for pickling. I tried starting them in my garden last year, but I started way too late. I was really excited by the prospect of a second planting season, but I started that way too late. I started at the end of August and everything that I planted just died with the first frost. And then I have regular cucumbers. These are improved long green. So same story as my pickling cucumbers. These ones died on me as well. It was very sad. Zucchini. I had struggles with my zucchini. It's in that video that I already referenced with my 12 garden lessons. Um, it did not do well. I planted way too many zucchini to start off with. I didn't thin my plants and I was negligent in my watering and they got mold and they died on me. They were diseased and ugly. Of marigolds, I planted these directly in my garden last year. This year, they were much higher than I expected them to be. They are crackerjack marigolds. So I'm gonna be growing these in pots and they're just gonna be all over the place. Morning glory, did not work out for me last year. I don't know if I'm going to be planting more, so I'm just gonna cast that aside. Do you grow morning glory? I'd love to hear your experience with it. Kale, I grew a lot of kale last year. My kale was the one crop that did super well in my garden, I don't know why. I treated it the same as I did everything else. This is red Russian kale and I ate a lot of kale last year, it was great. For lettuce, my lettuce did not do well and apparently lettuce is pretty easy to grow so this just shows how bad my first year garden was. So I have a musclin mix and a Grand Rapids lettuce. They're both heirloom. No wait, this one's container. So I'm gonna try growing this in containers because it just went directly in the ground. And then this one is an heirloom. I try to buy heirloom seeds for everything because if you get, I think it's F1, it's really hard to start new plants from their seeds. Heirloom seeds, you don't get as much yield, but the seeds that you do get from those plants Apparently, this is what I've learned, the seeds will bear fruit. I have peppers and I realized I'm still a little bit too green to start peppers from seeds. So I'm going to get a couple of pepper plants and pray that they do better than the ones last year. And I think they will because my garden will be in much better shape this year. Next year, I'll probably try starting these from seed because I'll have a better setup. I ordered a grow light and a heat mat, so that's going to make my pepper plants much better. But this year, I want to focus on starting eggplants and tomatoes from seed using that setup. So we'll see how that goes. Beets, I love beets. I actually have a victory borscht soup that's so easy to make. It's a recipe from World War II, so that will be linked below. And I also have a beet salad recipe if you want to check that out. It has an orange vinaigrette, but I have all kinds of salad dressings on my site. So if you hop on over to the blog, which is linked below, you just need to look up salad dressing or search vinaigrette and you'll get a few recipes for that. I have these Detroit dark red and it shared the same fate as my cucumbers because that's I planted it way too late. 
and I have more of the exact same beets. I love beets, and there's so many different varieties that you can choose from, but I just have the red beets. Peas. My peas did okay last year, but the one thing about peas is that they are a great candidate for succession plantings. So what that means is that if you continually plant them, you'll have a continual harvest. So I just planted them once. Actually, I planted them twice, but the second crop I planted too late, so I was too late in my succession planting. Here I have pencil pod black wax bush beans. I think next year I'll try with the pole beans, but for now bush beans are easier for me. But next year when my garden is more established, I think I'll be ready to experiment with large stakes. Uh, more of the same bean variety. Oh, and by the way, the pea variety is Lincoln Homesteader peas. Also heirloom seeds. And the beans that I harvested last year, I did save a few from seed. So I think I kind of just mixed them in there. Next I have radishes and these are these newfangled strips. So you like plant a trench and then you put the strip in it and you cover it and then apparently you have radishes from there. I tried it last year again I planted it too late and I think my soil I kind of put it on the edge of my garden so it was a little bit rockier so I don't think my radishes were happy plus everything was really close together. So I'm going to be switching up my whole method this year. Sugar snap peas, they're so delicious. I love eating them fresh and that's usually part of my problem. I go to harvest things and I just kind of eat everything off the vine. Contender bush beans, or green. I'm just realizing I'm holding up these packages for you to look at and you probably can't see it, so I'm sorry. I have chives, which I have in my herb garden. I tried starting these from seeds last year, but they have a longer planting time. I probably should have started these much earlier. They have 125 days to grow. So <laughs> last year I tried starting them from seed. I made the mistake, which is putting like two or three seeds per uh, pot. And I just had one blade that popped up and I couldn't figure out what I did wrong, but you need more than one seed. So I just went out and bought chives last year. Chives are perennial herbs, so my chives will be coming back next year, but I love chives and I want to have them all over the place. They're also great for companion planting. Dill. I love dill. I planted these in the ground, but they're probably best started indoors because they take 70 days. And then I also have Rainbow Blend tomatoes and Tiny Tim tomatoes that I need to start next week. I'm going to be going through what I ordered this year for my garden. So I'm hitting some of the list of what people used to plant in their victory gardens. I'm not planting carrots because I don't think I'd have enough room. I'd really love to dig out a fresh carrot from the ground. That sounds amazing, but maybe next year. And I'm not planting kohlrabi or turnip. I might be planting squash. My mom gave me seeds from her butternut squash, so I'm probably going to be planting those somewhere in my garden. I still have to plot it out and figure where everything's going to go. Okay, so from these seeds, I have, what is this? Oh, I have spinach. I wasn't going to plant spinach, and then my husband, he's going to get involved with the gardening last year. It was just me last year, and I'm like, okay, like, do this with me. So he's doing it with me. And he's like, are we planting spinach? So I went out and I got spinach seeds just for him. So that'll be good. I have arugula. Actually, hold on. These are sprouting seeds. So that's actually not for the garden. Since I'm in this zone and I'm not going to the grocery store as frequently as I used to, I've been sprouting seeds for my greens. So I've been relying on those for my greens. So I pop them in sandwiches. I put them on salads. And I have a video that's all about sprouting seeds. So... Um, I just kind of have this stack of containers. Actually, hold on, I'll bring it. There's water in this thing. I haven't emptied it, but I have four, I don't know what you call them, like four containers of seeds. So I have alfalfa seeds on top. I have fenugreek, mung beans. Those are, those are looking ready. And I have red clover. So twice a day, I rotate them. So this will go on the bottom, I rotate them and then I pour water on top and I basically have a continual supply of greens. I have a video that's all about sprouting so that's linked below as well. I actually took a long break from my sprouting and then I thought there's no better time to get back into my seed sprouting than now. Especially since it's going to be a while since I harvest anything from my garden. 
of Brussels sprouts. I've never grown them before, so this will be interesting. Actually, I'm very new, very green when it comes to gardening, so there's a lot of things that I haven't grown yet or things that I have grown poorly that I need to get better at taking care of. I have nasturtium seeds, nasturtium and nasturtium dwarf jewel mixture. Now the reason I have these is that they are pollinators and they are good companion plants for, especially for um, plants that grow higher like corn or, or pole beans because they provide a ground coverage. They're kind of like a living mulch. As pollinators they will attract friendly bugs to the garden like bees that will help pollinate everything. And they are also edible, so you can pick the flowers and you can use them in salads to make if you're feeling a little bit fancy. Uh, and then in addition to attracting pollinators, they also repel pests from your garden. So we're gonna see how that works for me. Swiss chard, Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard to be exact. I don't think the Swiss chard that magically appeared in my garden is going to be making a comeback this year, so I'll be planting that and hopefully reaping more Swiss chard than I did last year. And I'll have to watch videos and read my garden books to be able to do that. And I really didn't do enough of that last year, so this year it's, uh, I've been a lot more dedicated to learning about gardening and how to do it better. Echinacea. So this is another companion plant. Echinacea has medicinal properties, so if you're into herbalism or if you're interested in herbalism, echinacea can be used for natural remedies. I don't know very much about herbalism. I've never used echinacea, but apparently it is a good remedy for colds. It helps to alleviate skin rashes and infections. And it also helps to stimulate the immune system. It attracts butterflies and birds because apparently they really like the nectar. So it's another one of those pollinator plants. And I think that's the main reason why I got it. And they're pretty, they're like purple clone flowers. And I think they have different colors too. I don't know what color, oh, this is a purple clone flower. Rhubarb. I bought a rhubarb plant last year. It cost me $18 for a happy rhubarb plant and that was expensive and I planted it and then come fall, I didn't see it anymore. So I don't know if it's coming back. So I got seeds just in case because I love rhubarb. I think it's delicious in pies and in jams and cakes and whatever else rhubarb gets used for. Apparently you can also make rhubarb soda and I have water kefir that's going on now. I'll have to do a video on that once I get the hang of it. But rhubarb, I love rhubarb, it's tart and you add a lot of sugar and it's just delicious. I have beefsteak tomatoes. I have to start those soon. I have Roma tomatoes that are great for pastes and for sauces. I have Pacific Beauty Calendula seeds. So Calendula, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Calendula, Calendula, Calendula. I'm gonna say Calendula. These can be planted for cut flowers and I love cut flowers. I love being able to bring nature indoors throughout the summer to spruce things up inside and just to make things cheery. Like nasturtiums, they are also edible so you can toss them in salads. They also have medicinal properties. You can make salves with them. You can make syrups. You can use Calendula to make poultices if you have scratches and cuts and then it's also a companion plant so not only does it attract pollinators but it also repels pests so for example if you have this in the garden and if you have a problem with aphids aphids will go to the calendula and they'll leave the rest of your garden alone because it's more than happy enough with the calendula so you know maybe you won't be able to use it but everything else in your garden will be fine and i think it's something very similar with the nasturtium so next I have golden acre cabbage. I love cabbage, I've never grown it, so it's going to be a big experiment and wish me luck because if I have a lot of cabbage, that means I have a lot of homemade sauerkraut and it's gonna be really good because cabbage is surprisingly expensive. I only buy it when it's on sale at 33 cents a pound. Sometimes I'll get it from the farmer's market if they're looking good, but that's usually around the harvest time and you're still paying like $5 for a head of cabbage. So I'm gonna try growing my own and see how that goes. If you're interested in learning how to make sauerkraut, I have a video that's all about that and you should because it's probiotic rich. It has a lot of great vitamins and it tastes delicious and everything from savory oats to by itself, use it as a side dish, put it on your sausages. And when you do serve it with meat as just a little side dish, it, it really helps to stimulate digestion. So it's a great pair when you're eating meat. I have more chive seeds. I need to start those. I needed to start those last month, but here we are. I'll give it a try and see where I get. I have mammoth dill. 
You can see I really love chives and dill. I have wallow darky lettuce seeds. For early green moss endive, also known as chicory plaisé. It's great in salads, so yummy. And <laughs> I accidentally bought tomatillos. I thought they were tomatoes and I bought it because they were purple. And then when I showed my husband, look, I got, and then I look at the package, I'm like, oh, those are tomatillos. So I'm gonna grow purple tomatillos and I'm gonna make salsa and I'm gonna can it and it's gonna be great. And last but not least, I have rockets. So I mentioned earlier that I had arugula and as it turns out, I do have arugula for the garden. The rocket is the same thing as arugula. This is probably just a different variety, but I'm very excited because I love rocket. It's peppery and it, I think it's one of my favorite greens. I also love mash, but it's really hard to find these days. So that's just a peek at what I'm going to be growing in my garden. I'll keep you posted on how it goes, especially if you follow me online on Facebook or Instagram, I'll be sharing stories and I'll be sharing little posts about how my gardening adventures are going. So be sure to follow me on there. All the details are linked below. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me today and checking out what I'm growing in my little victory garden this year. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what you're planting in your own garden or in your containers, balcony garden, just around a tree outside if you're in a place like Montreal because they use every inch of space they possibly can. At least it depends on the neighborhood, but in neighborhoods that I've been. Actually, I'll give you some ideas in my video on Victory Gardens if you haven't checked that out already. Anyhow, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I really hope you follow along by hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you never miss an episode of The Kitchen. And if you are coming back to The Kitchen, you know I am thrilled to have you here. So thank you for joining me for yet another episode of The Kitchen. I do put out two new episodes a week, so I will be seeing you real soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye.